Welcome to the 2021 Southampton International Boat Show. Now the yacht behind me is a Discovery 48. Discovery 48, 480, it is the new incarnation of the larger sister of the boat. We used to have Ruby Rose, which was a Southerly 38. This is the 48 foot version. So we're talking swing keel, variable draft, twin rudders, huge amounts of internal volume, and a boat that you can happily take around the world. So let's go inside, take a look and see what we can see. Oh, hello everybody. This week you have me. I thought I'd jump in here and give you a tour of the lovely Discovery 480 and Nick will be back at the end with his final thoughts and wrap up. A quick little bit of backstory on this boat before we start. As many of you know, we owned a Southerly 38 for many years and our original plan was actually to upgrade to a Southerly 47. Uh, unfortunately, Southerly went bust in 2014, but luckily for everyone, Discovery bought them out and have continued to build swing cool twin rudder yachts. The Discovery 48 now comes in several incarnations with a fixed cool raised saloon, a fixed cool lower saloon, and a swing cool raised saloon, which is essentially an upgraded Southerly 480, and the boat we're touring today. Before we start, however, I do just want to mention that Discovery did go into voluntary liquidation in January this year. On their website, they do say that they are displaying at Southampton this year, at the Yachting Festival in Cairns, and at a few other boat shows this year. So I'm uncertain as to whether they're still operating. I've emailed them, they're yet to get back to me. I'm not sure if they're going to. And check out the description box below for any updates regarding whether or not Discovery Yachts is still operational. Anyway, let's get on with a tour of this very interesting yacht. So Discovery obviously chose to show this boat on the hard rather than in the water, and that's presumably to demonstrate the capabilities of that swing keel. You can bring it all the way up and essentially have very little draft, and that allows you to go into really shallow waters and you can even dry the boat out. So that is one of the major advantages of this setup. The prop is skegged, so it does have some protection, but those twin rudders are, of course, exposed. We personally did have a few experiences while we we're sailing on our swing keel boat where the rudders got rope wrapped around them. Um, one memorable occasion, we got a lot of algae wrapped around one of our rudders in the French canals and we completely lost steerage. So they are a bit of a double-edged sword, but I think that the fact that you have that swing keel more than makes up for it. Anyway, let's go into the cockpit. This cockpit is very similarly designed to our, 30, our Southerly 38. We've got those twin helms, of course, which I think is consistent throughout the entire Southerly and Discovery range. Very good visibility from the helm stations. You are somewhat protected uh, with that Bimini and Dodger setup, but you're definitely exposed. I mean, this is why we never sat at the helms, to be absolutely honest. We prefer to um, just sit in the cockpit and sail along from there, but of course, a good humming spot is paramount. We've got that really nice teak cockpit table, of course, and just after that, we have uh, what we will see in a moment is the hatch for the aft cabin. Now, I'm not loving this, although I'm struggling to think of an alternative. You would definitely want to keep it closed while underway, that's for sure. Although when you're at anchor, you could probably keep it open with no problems whatsoever. Just having a quick look at the stern, you've got the dinghy davits, of course. All the lines run back to the cockpit, making this boat very easy to sail double-handed. That's pretty standard these days. Um, even single-handed at a push. Not that I think you would do that unless it was an emergency. Heading down into the interior of the boat now, you may kind of semi-recognize this layout, especially if you are fans of distant shores. This is very reminiscent of the Southerly 47. Um, as I said before, I think this is essentially a reincarnation of the Southerly 47 slash Southerly 480. So you've got that raised saloon, which is a really lovely place to be. I love how you can just sit and look out. That was one issue that I had with the Living on a Manor Hole is that when you're in a lower saloon, uh, design then you are essentially kind of below the waterline unable to have any line of sight with your surrounding environment so I love the concept of a raised saloon it does kind of lend itself more to sitting around a table having a chat or eating rather than lounging but you know you can work out a way to make that work for you 
Another major advantage to having a raised saloon monohull is of course that the nav station actually provides you with good visibility so you can keep watch from the nav station. All I would say about that nav station is that I would really like to see like a little armrest so that when you are on a starb attack you're not falling off the chair and into the galley which you would definitely do. So that is something that I think does need to be taken into account when designing these nav stations. You need to be able to sit there no matter what tack you're on. Okay, let's go forward into the main cabin. God, this is so lovely, isn't it? My goodness, I love this space. It's just beautiful. The woodwork, look, if Nick were doing this commentary, he would be talking nonstop about the woodwork. I'm definitely gonna give it a mention. Discovery are known for their absolutely stunning woodwork. I mean, look at it. You can't really get better than this. So if you love that kind of timber interior look, then this is really gonna be up your street. I personally, really like this cabin I mean how could you not one thing that I always look at as you guys know is ventilation is there good ventilation in this cabin um, I'm gonna go with yes you've got three opening hatches in the kind of ceiling I'm gonna be that awkward person and point out that of course when it is raining you have to close them all and then you won't have any air flurry at all so that's just something to consider and I'll also just mention that the bow is not the best place for a comfortable night's sleep, particularly if you are underway um, or in a very rolly anchorage. Although if you're in a very rolly anchorage, then you might not be getting any sleep no matter where on the boat you are. Can we just take a moment to appreciate how beautiful that door is? My goodness, so, so beautiful. And now of course we're into the master heads. We've got a separate shower stool. I would expect nothing less from a 48 foot monohull. And of course the rest of the heads I think is pretty standard. And then heading aft into the aft cabin, this is also very lovely and there are options for different layouts and I think one of those options is that this is your master cabin and that the bow has like a different setup with, with more uh, berths. So I personally would probably go for that because I prefer the master cabin in the aft part of the boat, but hey, you do you. We've got some good ventilation in here with several opening hatches, one of which of course is that one that opens into the cockpit, as I mentioned before, but you do have other options and I think you would get some nice airflow in this cabin. And of course it's very homely and beautiful and cozy and frankly, a wonderful place to uh, put your head down. Let's take a look at the galley now. Now I think the galley might be one of my favorite parts of the boat and that's really saying something. This galley is so practical. It's beautiful, of course. I mean, we would expect nothing less, but look how enclosed it is. Look how well protected you would be in here. You could cook in here in literally any conditions. I'm not saying it would be fun. I'm saying that you wouldn't get thrown halfway across the boat. And yes, I have had that happen to me. So maybe this is a bit of a sore point for me, but love an enclosed galley you can really brace yourself against any of these counters and be completely safe and protected and i love that loads of storage as well and as we can see you can also have additional cold storage on that starboard side in that kind of storage area let's take a quick look at this engine bay i think nick would say that this is a little bit squeezy i'm not sure whether doing maintenance on this engine would be particularly easy because you really don't have much space around the engine at all um, so that's just something to consider perhaps in real life it's a little bit easier but from the looks of it it looks a bit cozy in there moving forward on the side deck we can have a look at those nice clean side decks that you can walk down without any tripping hazards flush mounted hatches of course i'm so excited about by the number of opening hatches i can see that really makes me happy no mast or rigging on this boat, of course, because we are in the middle of Southampton, which you may have already noticed. Obviously can't see those elements, but you can use your imagination. Overall, absolutely fantastic boat. I love this boat. I think that it would be perfect for Nick and I in perhaps a different world where we hadn't chosen a catamaran and also we could afford it. And that brings me neatly onto the price. We're looking at £825,000 for the base boat. And of course, once you add your taxes on top of that and your options, we are probably looking at closer to a million pounds. Let's go over some dimensions and finer details. The overall length is 14.8 meters or 48.7 feet. The beam is 4.5 meters or 14.6 feet. And the draft, which is I think the most important thing, is just over a meter up or just over 3.1 meters down. So that's 3.3 feet up with the keel up 
or 10 feet with the keel down. So you can see just by those numbers, the amount of flexibility that you have. You have that really shallow draft when you're in shallow waters. And then when you are sailing along in deeper waters, you have that really deep keel and all the benefits that that affords you. So, I mean, absolutely brilliant. Honestly, I think once you go for a swing keel, it's really hard to go back. And I honestly do not see how Nick and I could ever go to a monohole that had a fixed keel. We love a swing keel boat and that is at least half of why I love this boat. Let's see what Nick has to say. Okay, so what do we think of this boat? I absolutely love it. Having sailed uh, a twin rudder lift keel boat for seven years, I can see the advantage of this. The variable draft is a game changer for those people trying to get into port early, for those people who want to get into shallow drafts. And we use that swing keel all the time. Anchored in the Bahamas in a meter of water, drying the boat out around the world. It was a real game changer for cruisers to be able to lift the keel. Twin rudders give you a huge amount of bite no matter what angle you're hailing at, you're never gonna broach the boat with twin rudders. Internal volume is huge, the fit out is absolutely superb. Everything super well built, super well engineered. I absolutely love this boat, a fantastic boat. What are the disadvantages? Well, if you're looking at a boat with high internal volume, you are considering the fact that she's gonna be pretty flat transomed, and a flat transom means she is not gonna sail as well downwind as a canoe stern boat because you, the, just the action of the waves. So there is a playoff, internal volume, um, a, you know, increased internal volume gives you a flatter transom and essentially she doesn't sail as well downwind. Similarly, twin rudders, um, you don't get prop walk, and so it is a learning experience, close quartered boat handling, especially in tight spaces in marinas. So these boats do need bow thrusters. This one will need a stern thrust as well, just to increase the maneuverability. Would I buy this boat if I had the money? Absolutely. Would I sell this boat around the world? Absolutely. They are fantastic boats. And honestly, if this is something that you have been kind of eyeing up and thinking, yeah, I've kind of won the lottery, I've got this, I, I, you know, this is what I want to do and this is what I want to take my family in. There is a huge, huge amount to say for buying the, the Discovery at 48. In conclusion, I absolutely love the boat. They are super well built. It is a good handcrafted English boat and that has a soft spot for me um, and also because we used to be southerly owners. So that was uh, the review of the 480, the Discovery 480, previously this, the, the Southerly 48. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Again, this is just a series of videos which is kind of like explaining what we look for in a monohull and what we would look for in a capable monohull between about 40 and 50 foot to take us around the world. So this falls firmly into the comfortable cruiser. They point high, but they're not fast. Absolutely love the boat. I hope you enjoyed this one. We'll be back with another couple of reviews looking at again a different aspect of kind of like what's in the sailing market kind of performance oriented the kind of real luxury brands but also the kind of classic brands um, so if you enjoyed that give us a like give us a thumbs up and if you subscribe down below then there's always going to be something new for you to see so i hope you enjoyed that we'll see you again really soon goodbye <laughs>